Okay. Raghunesh, can we go down to the next question? Yes, sir. Okay. There's a figure drawn in over here. The question is, what is the reaction at A for the beam shown? Okay. You have W, kilo newtons per meter, and you have a curly curly line going right across the beam from this end to the other end. Yes. Raghunaj, before you answer, I'd like to understand what you had always some arrows here. Yes, sir. Why you have gone into this particular mode? Uh, in structural language, there are three types of loads actually. So such type of loads we are familiar with called as point load. The loads which are acting at a point. Whereas such type of loads are called as uniformly distributed load. So they are distributed all over the area. So it is called as uniformly distributed load. And the third type which is there, which is called as uniformly varying load. Where you have at one end there is a magnitude of the load which is more as compared to the other. So it is called as uniformly varying load. So point load, uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load. Such three types of loads are there in statics. So such type of problem you have the uniformly distributed load. So just like a duster which is there, right? So it is imparting a load on this particular, uh, you can say, beam. so it will be uh, on beam, it will be a UDM, uniformly distributed load. Whereas if I apply a load like this, so it will be a point load at this point. Therefore, there are various types of loads, uniformly distributed load, uniformly varying load and the point load. So we have to solve this by the method, I think according to your framing of question, you have to calculate the reactions at A. So, so solve or analyze any type of beam, we have to go for first, we have to calculate the number of reactions. So hinge support is there, so it will give you two reactions, one vertical reaction, one horizontal reaction, whereas at B, there will be only one vertical reaction, so it is having constraint into the Y direction. So number of Reactions are 3. We have number of equation again equal to 3. Therefore, DSI comes out to be 0. Therefore, this is a statically determinate structure. We can solve it by our 3 equations of equilibrium. Summation Fx 0, summation Fy 0 and summation moment at fixed point equal to 0. Now, to solve such type of problems, you have to convert first this uniformly distributed load into point load. And that conversion is nothing but finding out its area and the point load which is when you convert this into point load that point load is acting at its centroid so when you have to calculate this uh, this is act just like a, a rectangle so it will be like this only so area of rectangle will be b into l right therefore it will be w into l right and which is acting at the centroid so centroid of a rectangle is l by 2 Therefore, when you convert this into a point load, it will be like this. So, this is nothing but your free body diagram FBD of this particular beam. There will be two reactions at A, one reaction at B and the converted point load, this uniformly distributed load, we are just now converted into point load. The magnitude of load is nothing but its area. So, area will be W multiply by L. This W multiply by L and it is acting at the distance L by 2. So this distance is L by 2, this distance is L by 2, total length is L. Now this is very simple problem now, convert it into point load. We have to apply three equations of equilibrium. So you have to start with summation of fx is equal to 0. So summation of moment in x direction equal to 0. So we have only one, uh, you can say force in x direction, so HA is equal to 0. So this will be the first answer, HA is equal to 0. Now when you apply summation FY is equal to 0, summation of all the forces acting in Y direction equal to 0. So it will be VA, again we have to apply some sign convention. So upward we are considering it is positive, downward we are considering it as negative. 
So we are going in upward direction considered to be positive. W into L which is acting in downward direction considered to be negative. So minus W into L plus VB which is going in upward direction equal to 0. So we have the second equation VA plus VB is equal to W. Next will be summation movement at fixed point equal to 0. So we have fixed point either A or B. So we can take movement at any point. So if I take movement at A, so it will be movement is nothing but what? We have already explained it. It is nothing but force into the movement arm. So force multiplied by the perpendicular distance at which point we have applied force and the point at which we are calculating the movement. For that again we are applying it some sign convention considered to be clockwise as negative and anti-clockwise as the positive some sign conventions so therefore if you take movement at this point or movement at a so the force will be v and h will passing through a so force multiplied by perpendicular distance will be zero therefore the movement produced due to v a and h a equal to zero again w into l again we are keeping our thumb at a we are calculating the movement at a so it will producing a clockwise movement according to our sign convention it is negative Therefore, minus W into L, that is the force or magnitude of the force multiplied by the perpendicular distance will be L by 2. Next will be VB. If you keep the thumb at A, try to locate the direction of the force, it will be in anti-clockwise direction. So, VB multiplied by the perpendicular distance, it will be L. Therefore, it will be positive VB into L equal to 0. So, this is the third equation we have got. Summation fx0, summation fy0 and summation moment at fixed point equal to 0. Now we can very well calculate the value of vb from this equation since it is having only one unknown which is vb. Once you calculate vb, you can substitute back in second equation the value of vb. You can calculate the correct answer which is for uh, vertical reaction at A. So uh, if you solve this problem, the answer comes out to be the uh, WL, uh, this will be what? The VB into L. So it will be. You can calculate. So it will be minus WL square divided by 2 plus VB into L equal to 0. So VB into L is equal to WL square divided by 2 when you get it to the right hand side. So L will go, got cancelled. So VB comes out to be WL divided by 2. When you substitute this in second equation, it will be VA minus W into L plus VB. You have to substitute it as WL divided by 2 equal to 0. So it will be VA equal to WL minus WL divided by 2. So it will be 2WL minus WL divided by 2. So it will be WL divided by 2. So the correct answer will be WL divided by 2. So I think the first option, first option. Okay. is the correct answer WL divided by 2. Okay. I think so Raviraj, with a lot of jaggery you have got this answer. And that's absolutely right. Uh, the option A, WL divided by 2. I'll go back to the question. The options are option A, WL by 2, option B, WL, option C, WL by 4, and option D, WL square by 2. Ravi, I think so. We have seen uniformly distributed load. Then you said uniformly varying load, yes. and you had a point, point load. So ultimately, whatever uh, loads are there, whether it's uniformly distributed or varying, you always have to convert it into point load. Point load. Yes, sir. Once you understand that it should be converted into point load, then other equations are fx is equal to y, 0, zero. fy is equal to 0, and moment about that uh, fixed, thing, point. fixed point is zero. 0. Okay. So once these fundas are clear, I think so you, all of you have to remember these fundas very, very clearly and keep it in mind while solving problems related to mechanics. Okay? Thank you. Okay, Raviraj. The next question. Yes, sir. Calculate the vertical reaction of a beam 
at support A for the beam shown, you have a beam AB, you have a hinge support here, you have a roller support here, and this is, as per your definition, uniformly varying load of W kilonewtons per meter. Your options are, option A, WL by 3, option B, WL by 2, option C, WL by 6, and option D, WL. Ravira, you tried to explain in the earlier problem something related to wearing load. Yes, sir. Now you have a problem related to wearing load. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is the type of load called as uniformly varying load. So to solve such type of problems, you have to again convert this uh, uniformly varying load into point load. Before that, we will calculate just number of reactions and number of equations, and we will calculate <clears throat> what is the DSR, so that can we able to solve such type of problems that you can calculate. So vertical reaction at A, horizontal reaction at A, since it is having hinge at A, vertical reaction at B, since it is having roller at B. So number of reactions are 3, number of equations are not going to be changed, so it will be for equilibrium, number of equations are 3, nothing but summation fx0, fy0, summation moment at fix n equal to 0. So r is equal to e, nothing but dsi is equal to 0, statically determinate structure, so that we can calculate or you can solve such type of beams or you can analyze such type of beams by applying equations of equilibrium. Now we have to convert this uniformly varying load into point load. Conversion is nothing but finding out its area and its centroid. So the area of the triangular figure is half into base into height. So if we have to draw the FBD, that is nothing but the free body diagram, it will be like this. At A, vertical reaction at A, horizontal reaction at A, at B, vertical reaction at B. So when you convert it into point load, it will be something like half into base. So we will consider this to be base which is having magnitude W and the height is nothing but L. So half into base into height will be the area of this particular figure that will be the magnitude of point load and it is acting at some distance. That distance is nothing but the centroid and as you know the centroid of triangle is H by 3 from the base. So H by 3 means over here it will be L by 3 from the base. So this will be nothing but your L by 3. The remaining distance will be 2L by 3. Now this problem is got converted into point load acting at L by 3 from the base. So we have to again apply the three equations of equilibrium. Summation Fx is equal to 0. So summation of all the forces which is acting into x direction equal to 0. Therefore, obviously your HA comes out to be 0. So this will be the first equation. Second equation, summation Fy is equal to 0. Summation of all the forces in y direction equal to 0. Therefore, it will be Va. Again, we have to apply some sign convention, upward positive, downward negative. So it is going in upward direction. So Va is positive. Vb, again, it is going in upward direction. So it is positive. And the third force, which is acting in downward direction, so it is considered to be negative, WL divided by 2. So this will be your second equation, which is VA plus VB minus WL divided by 2 equal to 0. When you apply the third equation, summation of moment at fixed end equal to 0. So we have to take moment at this point, which is your A. So if we have to apply the moment, again we have to go for some sign convention, clockwise considered to be negative, anti-clockwise considered to be positive. So we have to keep your thumb at A, try to locate the direction of the force. It is going in downward direction, so it will produce a clockwise moment. So the clockwise moment will be WL divided by 2 multiplied by L by 3. According to our sign convention, it is negative. So it will be <coughs> WL divided by 2, magnitude of the force and the perpendicular distance is L by 3. So this is the first force. The second force will be V and HA, which is passing through A, perpendicular distance equal to 0. So moment produced due to HA and VA at A equal to 0. What about VB? So we have to keep your thumb at A, try to locate the direction of the force. It is giving anti-clockwise direction. 
according to our sign convention it is positive so it will be vb magnitude of the force into perpendicular distance perpendicular distance is l equal to 0 so this will be your third equations third equation so we have in third equation only one unknown which is vb so we have to calculate that vb so it will be minus wl square divided by 6 plus vb into l equal to 0 therefore vb into l equal to wl square by 6 so l will cancel out so it will be vb is equal to wl divided by 6 so this is the vb which is the vertical force acting at b but we have asked the vertical reaction at a so we have to go for again the second equation substitute the value of vb as wl by 6 so it will be va plus vb is nothing but wl by 6 minus wl divided by 2 equal to 0 therefore va comes out to be so it will go in this direction vl divided by 2 minus wl divided by 6 so it will be 6 so 3 into wl minus wl so it will be 2 wl divided by 6 so finally it comes out to be wl divided by 3 so the correct answer is wl divided by 3 i think the a option option a okay okay so a is your favorite sir i think so i think so up till now we are always with a except, <laughs> except for option 2 uh, option b was there with all the calculations which you have done, your answer is absolutely right. Option A, WL divided by 3. That's perfectly right. Yes, sir. And a uh, lot of things. Maybe this, similarly, we have solved the earlier problem. Yes, sir. On similar lines, you find out VB, substitute in the earlier equation, and get the things solved. A little, little bit of understanding I'm also getting.